What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about an update that just came out from Zero Hour. It's called the Quality of Life Update. Ah, yes, this is something that the community has been asking for for a while now, and we'll definitely get into why. But before we do that, be sure to like up the video so that more people can see what's going on with this game. Subscribe and ding that bell if you're new so that you can get more updates on this game or any other game that I decide to cover. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and hop into it. So the first thing that they say on here is they have been working hard on implementing quality of life improvements and most of these things take up a lot of research and feedback they've received throughout the year they have been getting responses about how they only seem to provide content but very few actual quality related updates yeah so for those of you that don't know zero hour has actually been pretty good with giving updates to the game content related updates like adding brand new maps guns or mechanics or what have you but what they haven't been good at is actually fixing the things that are in the game currently like for example there's a couple of animations that just don't look good they need to be updated or fixed i feel like there's a bunch of things that other games have that this game just doesn't have like simple things like a server browser or something and i think one of the biggest things right now is that there's like way too many hackers in the game right now man i don't know if it's enough to like really like tank the game but i just feel like there's been quite a bit of an exodus from zero hour because they just don't have some sort of anti-cheat to stop them from you know getting out of hand i really don't know how bad the cheaters were but i kept getting sent videos of people actually hacking the game and just shooting people through walls and stuff so yeah they need some sort of anti-cheat or a way to deal with them at the very least and uh yeah so anyways they are changing that that is why they are writing this announcement they will give more information with updates very soon please note that this update will be coming out in multiple patches they even have like a bit of a launch window here for december and january which will consist of the next major operation okay cool cool and now they go into what they've actually added in the game so far which i'm not actually sure if this is in the main game or if this is actually the developer update. I wish they would have specified that. I'm gonna check to see really quick. Uh, the server browser is in the game at the moment. Okay, neato. I didn't actually know that that was in the game already. That was kind of cool, but yeah. So with the server browser, you can basically filter it here so that you can look for PvP, co-op, custom matches, and also you can filter it by maps, which is great. I don't think there's any maps that I really hate so far, so this should be fun if I ever decide to go through server browser. But uh, yeah, the server browser has helped massively with improving their matchmaking. Now, you're finally getting that ability to play with randoms or specific players. Neato. Again, I didn't know that this was actually in the game already. I think it was, I just never freaking noticed it. But yeah, anyways, moving on, the next thing that they added was reporting bugs and players. They added a feature for reporting players and bugs where the players don't have to manually send reports using Discord anymore. Oh yeah, I mean honestly that was like the best way to actually freaking report anybody was to go to their Discord. Glad that this is in here. This is out as their first iteration and is something that will improve over time. They also have plans to implement a report bug system and then they go on to talk about how they could possibly add in a replay system and make it public where you can share your replays with others. That would be freaking cool. As a content creator i could definitely screw around in the replay system to make some pretty cool videos especially if i'm doing like a solo run against like 50 ai that'd be great but yeah basically this reporting system right here is you just click on the player's name and you report them right then and there awesome i just hope that they have some sort of system that actually helps people in case they got wrongly reported because i feel like people could abuse that system if not used in the right hands but anyways let's move on to the next thing here it says planned updates anti-cheat ah yes this is something we've been researching since the beginning. Through this, we found that the Denuvo anti-cheat would best cater to our needs. Their quality and services are a benefit to the game and will greatly make the players have a much better online experience in Zero Hour. The anti-cheat update will be coming out in the next upcoming patches. We will be releasing more information soon. To clear any confusion, we added an FAQ for players who had also had any questions. When does the anti-cheat install? When the quick match multiplayer is assessed. Does it start with my computer? No. And it stops with the game. Will it make the game slower no we did extensive profiling and found no differences can i remove it yes uninstall it from add remove program files at any time de nuvo de nuvo anti-cheat why does that sound familiar hold on i gotta look this up i'm gonna type it here up on the old youtube de nuvo oh oh that's right de nuvo was that drm right that broke a bunch of games and ruined performance or something like that yeah i'm looking at all these freaking videos right here man how did these developers miss that they say that they did their research but they obviously didn't see all these videos Videos. That's just DRM. Let's see what the anti-cheat is like. Oh boy. Oh, even my main man Sid Alpha covered it. Yo, Sid, you want to enlighten my audience on what Denuvo is and what it does? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. 
The core debate surrounding De Novo, its efficacy and its potential performance impacts on games that implement De Novo have been ongoing and pervasive. De Novo themselves and games companies continue to assert that De Novo does not impact game performance. Which, with a two-story building-sized asterisk, I would agree. However, that assertion is dependent on a properly implemented De Novo integration. And in terms of those integrations, De Novo has fallen short in numerous scenarios, specifically when it is improperly implemented, layered on top of other anti-piracy systems, or utilized on games with improperly optimized coding. Take for example Assassin's Creed Origins that layered Ubisoft's own launcher-based DRM on top of De Novo on top of VM Protect, where VM Protect is an anti-cracking protection and was seemingly being used to protect the De Novo package in order to further prevent attempts at piracy and unlawful distribution. My basic thoughts on De Novo is that when it is properly implemented, it is non-invasive and will not cause performance issues. But when it has been improperly implemented or layered on other anti-cheat or anti-piracy systems, the issues grow exponentially. There have been, by my count, about half a dozen games where the pirated versions performed significantly better simply due to the fact that De Novo was not present when compared to the retail versions. And when you factor in the recent De Novo outage, which was attributed to an SSL certificate expiration, which led players being unable to play games such as Guardians of the Galaxy, Football Manager 2022, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Persona 4 Golden, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, we are presented with the fact that these games, whether single player, multiplayer, or combined, an always online DRM or online when launched DRM is an absolute detriment to gamers. Back to you, Durag. Thank you, Sid Alpha. Hope you get better soon, man. So yeah, Sid kind of mentioned this, but I kind of wanted to expand on it with like a mini video here because the Nuvo was in the news like yesterday. So I'm just going to go ahead and play that. The Nuvo DRM sucks. I always fucking hated it. It's always in games. It slows things down. And this weekend, it prevented people from playing a bunch of different video games uh, that it's attached to because the, the DRM itself went down. And it was probably someone over at Denuvo that forgot to re-register one of their domains. And because Denuvo DRM in your games couldn't connect to, you know, the, the mother box somewhere else, uh, yeah, you couldn't play. Look. You couldn't play any of the games <laughs> yeah, that you yeah, wanted to play. Uh, what games are that? Uh, so I it's like it fan. was like Mortal Kombat 11, Guardians of the oh, Galaxy. Shit. It's some bigger games that have come out. I mean, De Novo's in a, in a lot of other ones. Uh, Football Manager was a big one. That was one that people were complaining about on the internet. So this is just another opportunity. It's just you just couldn't play at all. It just locks you out. A pop up came in and says, "We can't connect. You can't play your game." It's like, but I bought it. It's like, yes, but. Did you? But, but but did you? <laughs> but it's a fine print. Uh, so DRM is going to be one of those things that, as gamers become more aware of their consumer rights, and we keep losing them to the gaming industry, we're eventually going to have to kind of rally together and just say that like enough is enough. My game, my single player game with no microtransactions, doesn't need to be constantly connected to the no, internet. Oh, I hate that. Doesn't have to always be on, and it's just a piece of shit. Get it out of our games. So yeah, I had a conversation with the developer of Zero Hour, and uh, here's how that went. Hey man, I just. I wanted to let you know that Denuvo might be a mistake. Denuvo anti-cheat is probably the worst in the industry because it's been known to cause game crashes and ruin performance. Just a heads up. And he replied to me saying, Hey, really appreciate the concerns. Rest assured we are testing their solutions to its roots to profile for any such reported issues. The tests so far have been quite positive and showed 0% performance difference. While there is a slight amount of memory usage, but we are working on resolving that. The Denuvo anti-cheat department is working very closely with us and so the implementation and tests is going at a very good pace. I mean, I see what you're saying, but coming from an outside perspective, it feels like you're just going with the guys with a really bad reputation. That's why it kind of feels like it's a mistake just waiting to happen. But that's just how I feel. What do you guys think? Do you think that going with Denuvo is a good idea? I mean, Sid Alpha said that if it's properly implemented, that you probably won't get any problems with it. But just the other day, they forgot to like update something and several games became unplayable. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think down below. We're going to push 
on to the next thing here. So, uh, wow, that actually took up quite a bit of the video there. Uh, I guess we're just gonna run through the rest of the update. Polishing gameplay. This is going to be an improvement from working on animations to smoother movement and better control to fixing bugs that stayed in the beginning. We plan on fixing these issues in the next update. Oh my god, thank you. That's what I was complaining about this entire time. Man, if they could just fix that jankiness. Oh my god. Moving on to the next thing. New and improved training ground. One of the biggest implements we lack now is the ability to teach new players the important fundamentals of gameplay before they get in the match. This is why we're working on a whole new training ground with a new kill house and a whole new tutorial section. We also have plans on making this squad based where you can get in with your fellow teammates. Giving this ability to players will give them benefits if they play in the game. Man, this reminds me of something that Ready or Not tried to do. Well, actually, I think they're still doing it, but it feels like it's been a minute since the last time we talked about something like that. But yeah, it seems like you're going to be able to do a kill house with your friends. Here's what I would like to see when it comes to the kill house. They should definitely make it like their maps where the kill house changes up every time that you go into it, or at least like have some version of that, because I'm sure a lot of people would like to speed run one particular part of the map, but it would also be a cool feature to have the kill house change up in, you know, different ways. That would be great. But yeah, they're showing off a bunch of pictures here, and yeah, they look pretty cool. Pretty cool, pretty cool. They got like a catwalk and everything. These screenshots are not from in-game footage, and it does not reflect the final product. Okay, next operation. In our next operation, we have plans to add squad AI, where players can have AI teammates. This is still in the research phase, and we will soon update on this feature in later announcements, including new maps, guns, etc. Some new weapons are planned. They've got the SKS. I think my only issue with the SKS is that it seems like that mag is a bit too small, but I don't know, maybe I'm... It's been so long since I've actually seen an SKS with a mag, but I mean, it looks a little small. Maybe I'm just going nuts, but anyways, we got the P-10C. Nice little weapon. I'm assuming that's going to go to the counter-terrorist, and the SKS is going to go to the terrorist, I assume. And then we got the Honey Badger. Ooh! And it looks actually like a smaller version of it? More compact version, maybe? Not really sure. I feel like I've seen the Honey Badger before, but it was like a bigger version of this. But yeah, anyways. Up next, we got the FN Foul, which I'm assuming is going to go to the bad guys. And the Honey Badger is going to go to the counter-terrorist. Neato! And then they also have the MK-14, but there's no picture here, unfortunately. It's a work in progress. And that's pretty much it for the update. Pretty big one, decent sized one. I'm not a fan of the Denuvo idea, but I mean, everything else is pretty good, in my opinion. What are your guys' thoughts on the update in general? Let me know what you think down below, because I'm going to get the hell up out of here. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or click on the join button. These videos take a long time to make, and I just don't have the time normally, but I still like making the videos, you know? Any donation would help. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on games like Zero Hour or anything that I post. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.